Hi everyone, this is Heather Lautinen from the Flourish Academy, and today we will be removing objects using the generative AI inside of Photoshop. Make sure you visit flourish.academy to learn more about our courses and join us in our private Facebook community where we support photographers of all levels. And check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com, for all of your photography needs. You will be supporting a small family owned business. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, leave a comment and share with all of your photography friends. It helps us to produce more content. Before we jump in, I just wanted to show you that I am currently using version 24.7 of Photoshop beta. That's important because it is changing daily. In fact, there are things happening today that were not happening yesterday as I record several videos this week. So I just wanted to make a note that if yours looks different, that's why. My friend Jamie sent me these images from a recent wedding that she photographed, and we're going to clean up a few of the issues, beginning with this photo. Obviously, we have a bit of a situation here with this railing, and uh, when you see this as a photographer, you're always like, I should have just stepped three feet to the right, but she didn't catch it at the time. So we're going to try to use the generative AI fill to take care of it. I am going to begin by using my quick selection tool and I'm just going to click and drag over all parts of this railing. I need to add down here. Oh, we got a little bit too much. So what you can do is hold down alt or option on your keyboard in order to subtract that selection out. And I'm just going to ask Photoshop to generate this and I'm going to leave that blank based on the surroundings and kind of hope for the best. Well, I guess we could argue that is not the best because it looks like what Photoshop did is just move the bar or change it. So let's try that again. So we're just going to delete that layer and I can actually go to select, reselect. You could press shift command D because I already made that selection. But this time I'm going to help Photoshop, I hope, by telling it to remove the railing and rebuild the dress. Well, here we go again. Nothing really has changed and that is unfortunate. Why don't we try and I'm not sure that this is going to work either, content aware fill. So I'm going to reselect that and go to the edit menu and select content aware fill and just see what happens. Let's say, okay, command or control D in order to deselect. Well, that made it pretty crazy as well. And that's because this is a very challenging situation you could try to rebuild the dress with a variety of healing tools, but I also see that we have a veil to contend with and the dad's hand. So this looks pretty tricky to me. And I am actually an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop and I wouldn't tackle this. I would send it off maybe to a service or just include it. It's just one of those things that happen. So let's move on to this photo and I see multiple issues that we can tackle. There are people in the background. There is some type of rope or electrical wire on the tree. He's got a phone in his back pocket and we have multiple signs. I think what I would probably do is crop this image from the left and just crop those people out. But I like to experiment with generative AI fill. So we're gonna keep them there for now. Let's begin with this sign. I'm gonna zoom in and reposition. I'm using the lasso tool. You can use whatever tool you would like to make this selection. I'm going to make it as quickly as possible just to see what happens. Generative fill, I'm not going to give it inf any information. I'm just gonna see what happens. Okay, wow, that looks pretty good to me. I'm interested in these other variations. And just to make a note, you can access the variations with your properties panel by just clicking on these variations or also using this floating bar. You can just click through, you see one, two, three, and wow, actually, um, I think I like version one or two 
the best. I think I'll stick with version two. That looks pretty good. So let's try to remove this sign as well. I think this might get a little bit tricky because it's so close to our subject, but what have we got to lose? Well, he actually has a lot to lose, but <laughs> we'll be careful. Okay, again, I'm actually really impressed by all of those versions, especially, it's so interesting that it it retained some some light, some highlight on that one piece of shrubbery and it changed the bench. I think I'll stick with this one. Obviously that's a personal preference. Okay, before we take a look at the cell phone in his pocket or maybe it's his wallet, I just wanted to show you that you can hide this bar, reset it or pin it. Um, it does get on my nerves, but I like to be able to move it around. So I'm going to select my background layer. Make sure you grab that layer before you make your selection. And I'm going to loosely make a selection here. Again, I, I don't have high hopes for this. This looks like a pretty tricky situation for Photoshop, but I like to experiment. That looks a little bit messy. That looks really messy. And okay, that doesn't look bad, except we have this new line there. I wonder what would happen if I told it to remove the object in his pocket. Let's try that. Let's do this selection again. And this time I'm going to suggest that it remove the cell phone from the pocket and see if that changes what we see. Okay, we have another new interesting pocket. We have a situation there <laughs> and then another pocket. Okay. I'm actually going to click generate again and see if it can give me some more options. So now you will see that I have six options to choose from. And I think that what will happen in this situation is I'll use the best version and then clean it up manually with one of the healing tools, maybe, maybe this version, and then I would just have to remove that line. But it actually did a pretty decent job considering the, the wrinkles in the shadows can get somewhat complex. I'm going to make a loose selection of these people just to see what happens. But again, I would probably normally just crop them out of the image because I don't like that behind there. But I'm curious how Photoshop handles this. Okay, not bad. I think that that looks pretty good. Version one. And lastly, we are going to address this electrical box and the wires and the rope on the tree. So I'm going to select the background layer, make a loose selection of this electrical box, generate fill, generate. I'm not messing around, giving it any prompts. I hope that it can figure it out. And I think that looks pretty good. Actually, Maybe version two looks the best. Okay, great. Selecting the background layer again. Let's see what we can do with this electrical cable. I'm going to grab it in sections. I am actually thinking that this would be faster to just use the spot healing brush because the generative fill takes a few moments. I'm speeding up parts of the video, so we're not waiting for it, but you can see that this is taking several seconds and it did an okay job. I don't really love this. So what I am going to do is delete that layer and see if I can quickly grab my spot healing brush tool and just brush over small sections. I think where people get tripped up on this is they try to do it all at once. And you can see I'm just brushing over small sections. It is automatically sampling the pixels around it and it's doing a pretty good job. Let me try to do this rope over here. And I think that's working pretty well. So let me really quickly finish this up. I was actually able to accomplish that really quickly using the spot healing brush. I wouldn't recommend using generative fill for everything. Again, it's sometimes wacky and slow and unpredictable, and you have to have a pretty good working knowledge of the healing tools anyway. So if we look at the overall before and after, Oh, I would also need to clean up his second pocket <laughs> that AI generated, but I could do that quickly as well. 
I would probably use the patch tool. I think this is pretty impressive. I hope that you found it useful. I'll see you in the next video.